Hey guys, we've finished a good portion of the covering that we need to do for our bear hawk now. So I wanted to stop and show you how we did the rudder, the horizontal stabilizers, the elevators, and the ailerons. So stick around and we'll show you the details. All right, so out of respect for your time, if you watched the last video where we installed Ortex on the interior, I'm gonna try not to duplicate much of that information in this video. Okay, so we started on the ailerons. Before we cover the ailerons, we need to do a few things. First, we need to rivet the trailing edge in place. Then we needed to construct and install counterbalance tubes in both ailerons. We used 7 8 inch tubing and fill it with lead shot. I copied another Bearhawk builder's weight who also used Oratex for the same ailerons. I first plugged one end of the tube and poured most of the shot in. Then I mixed up some epoxy and put it in one end, trying to work it down into the shot a little ways. After that end had cured, I poured in the remaining shot needed to hit my target weight and epoxied that end. Then I slid the tube into place and riveted it with stainless steel flush head pole rivets. Once the ailerons were ready to be covered, I laid them out on a piece of fabric and marked them everywhere they would touch to be glued. Since the trailing edge is a nice straight edge, we could use one piece of fabric and have the overlapping seam on the leading edge. Next, I cleaned the ailerons well with denatured alcohol and put two layers of hot melt glue on both the ailerons and the fabric. After the glue had dried completely, I repositioned the aileron on the marks previously made and started to tack the fabric. On these large aluminum pieces, it was easy to get air pockets. So I took my time starting in the middle whenever practical and completely tacked everything down at 90 degrees Celsius before going back and setting the glue with 120 degrees Celsius. Once the bottom piece was tacked on the nose, I pulled it tight as Amanda set it to the trailing edge with a heat gun and a felt pad. Before bringing the top piece all the way over the nose, we cleaned and applied two coats of the hot melt glue to the overlapping area. There were a couple of cases where I still had an air bubble while setting the glue. In these cases, I poked a small hole in the center of the bubble and hit it with the heat gun. On the sides, I glued the top piece down first since the bottom piece was nice and straight. Around the nose, I cut out little wedges so the fabric would lay flat. After gluing the top pieces down, I cleaned and applied more glue to the overlap area. The side alone didn't seem like quite enough overlap at the trailing edge, so I brought the fabric all the way back to the top for a ways. 
Where the hinges are, I cut out wedges similar to the sides and stuck the fabric down with the heat gun. After all the fabric was completely set and cured, I came back and tightened it up in all of the open areas. The next step was to apply reinforcing tape for the rib stitching. There are self-adhering reinforcing tapes compatible with Oratex, but apparently we felt like we were progressing too quickly because we decided to make our own reinforcing tapes with scrap pieces of Oratex we had left over. So these are applied consistent with the techniques used with the rest of the Oratex. Two coats of glue on both surfaces and then ironed into place. With the reinforcing tapes in place, I measured and marked the location of all the holes and pre-punched them with an awl the same diameter as the stitching needle. I used a 12 inch needle and the lacing cord made by Lonitz specifically for using with Oratex because it sounds like most of the traditional waxed cord can cause issues with the finish tapes. I learned the modified seine knot from Kara Durrell. She has a good story to help the verbal learners, so I'll link that video, but I'll show some close-ups for the visual folks. First, we'd start on the right-hand side and come back up on the left. Then we tied a square knot, and added a half hitch on both sides of the knot. Once all of the knots were loosely in place, I'd tighten them down in the same order tied. Then I would trim the tail about two inches long and push it back through the hole on the right side, chasing it through with the knot. With the tail and knot through the hole, I would run the needle up to the next hole on the right side and pull it tight parallel to the rib. Then I would go back through the same hole Clear through the bottom, but leave a loop up top. This loop would circle the hole on the left, and the loose side of the loop should be closest to you. Then we'd come back up through the bottom and through the loop on the left. This piece is held straight up the whole time while tying the following knot. At this point, we would make a triangle out of the loop. The needle goes under the right side, over the horizontal stretch of the triangle furthest from you, and then back under the same leg of the triangle, and then over the left leg of the triangle. When you pull it tight, there should be an X over the needle. Then, after pulling the piece that's coming up through the hole over to the right, we would then start pulling the slack in through, holding our finger on the knot at the very end, pushing the knot through the hole. The same process was continued until the last set of holes was reached. When we got to the end, we would start with tying the same knot, coming up through the middle of the loop, under the right leg of the triangle, over and then under the top leg, and then over the left leg of the triangle. But to finish this knot at the end, we would add a half hitch to the left side of the knot. After the knot and the half hitch is pulled tight, I would push the knot through the hole on the right and then run the needle back down to the previous hole, pull it tight and cut it off, leaving the tail inside. Once all of the rib stitching was done, the area the finishing tapes would cover was cleaned and two coats of hot melt glue was applied. A one inch foam brush provides the approximate width needed and since it will all be covered by the finishing tapes, I just freehanded it. But as a heads up, this glued area will show through the finishing tapes, so you may want to mask this area before applying the glue if you're worried about clean looking lines. After the glue was dried, we put the finishing tapes on. I would tack them in place until I had them positioned exactly how I wanted them. 
Then I used the iron to work the center down into place. And once I was happy with the center, I would iron the edges down. I extended the finishing tapes past the ribs over the nose at the hinge pockets to cover those seams there. To finish up, I came back with the heat gun and went over the center, focusing on the spots where the lacing cord came up, working any remaining trapped air down through the lacing holes. Next, I put finishing tapes over the seams on both sides. And to finish up the ailerons, I put 3 inch finishing tape over the seam at the leading edge. All right, on to the tail pieces. The horizontal stabilizers could be done with a single piece of fabric like the ailerons because the trailing edge is straight. We started by setting the trailing edge. Then we pulled the bottom piece as tight as we could get it and stuck it down to the underside of the leading edge. It seemed to work best for us to start in the center and work one direction and then come back and go the other. Then Amanda would heat the leading edge, blocking the fabric further back to keep from activating the glue on that portion, while I would pull as hard as I could, trying to stretch and pull out any wrinkles. After sticking the fabric down about 70% of the way around the leading edge tube, I cut the excess off so it would just about wrap the rest of the way around. Afterwards, we finished wrapping the underside piece around the leading edge tube. It certainly took a little practice to figure out how long, how much, where, and when to apply heat. But basically, we tried to get the fabric tacked down to the tube without applying too much heat. And then once the fabric was contacting the tube, we could hold the heat on it much longer to overcome the heat sink of the tubing and get the glue on both surfaces sufficiently hot to fully activate it while working out as many wrinkles as possible. With the bottom side in place, we taped along the edge of the tubing and glued the overlap area. We also needed to provide some sort of support where the trim horns pass through to keep the fabric from shrinking away. We did this by cutting out and priming some pieces of scrap aluminum and then I glued them in place and put a patch of Oratex over the top. Once finished, I just cut the fabric out so the trim horn could pass through the slit made in the aluminum piece. After all the overlap glue dried, we started putting the top piece on. Again, I would try to pull it as tight as possible as Amanda heated and rubbed it all down. Once we got close to the tape marking the edge of the glued area, I creased the fabric to mark where to cut and then cut it. In a few areas, we ended up leaving small wrinkles as we worked the fabric around. I'm sure with a little more skill, time, and care, all of these could have been worked out. These little wrinkles will be on the bottom side and not really visible. We tried to balance getting as many of them worked out as possible with not overheating it since we were sitting on top of a previously cured glue joint from the underside fabric. After the glue was fully cured and after stretching the open areas tight, we glued the fabric to the ribs, applied the reinforcing tapes, rib stitched, and applied the finishing tapes just like we did for the ailerons. The lower hinge for the rudder needs something to keep the fabric from shrinking away. I fashioned a little piece out of wood to accomplish this. I made it the same thickness as the trailing edge tubing and shaped it to fit into place. After allowing the finish to dry, I glued it in place. Really, the glue was just meant to hold it until the fabric was done because at that point, the fabric should keep it in place. 
Then the fabric was cut so it would wrap around and glue to this small wood piece, sealing that area up pretty well. For the upper rudder hinge and both of the elevator floating hinges, I made a piece that wrapped around the hinge and was held in place by the fabric. The precise location of these hinges were marked before I took the tail feathers off for covering. The rudder and elevators needed to be done in two pieces since there wasn't a continuous straight side to wrap around. The control surfaces on the Bearhawk also have some nicely arced edges, which makes for a nice looking tail in my opinion, but also means it takes a little extra care while installing Oratex to minimize wrinkles. I would pull as hard as I could and work the fabric back and forth while trying to stretch out as many wrinkles as possible while Amanda was heating it. It seemed to work best to focus on small areas at a time as we worked our way around the curve. I definitely ended up with some wrinkles, especially when finishing the wrap around the tube. Many of them were on the inside, so I didn't worry too much about it. The elevators were mostly the same as the rudder, except we had to work around where the trim tabs go. Once we had one side on, we cleaned, masked, and then glued the overlap all the way around. Sticking the second side on was then mostly like the first, but a little easier since we could terminate the fabric at the edge of the tubing instead of wrapping it clear around. When stretching the fabric around, I would try to pull it hard enough to stretch the wrinkles out past the masking tape. Isn't this fun? It wasn't always possible for me, but the closer you can get, the easier it is to cut straight and lay down flat. <laughs> then we went through the same shrinking open areas and setting the fabric to the ribs, reinforcing tapes, rib stitching, and finish taping the ribs. To finish, we put on the edge finishing tapes. Before applying the tapes, we put a thick bead of glue right at the termination of the top piece of fabric and let it dry completely. Putting the edge tapes on the arced trailing edges was something that I was worried about, and it turns out it was actually pretty easy if you had help. One important step that made this part easy was firmly securing the piece that we were working on. Then we would stick the tape on pretty well at the starting point because we will be pulling pretty hard on the other end. After the start was set, I'd pull using the roll of tape until the wrinkles around the edges were tight enough I was confident we could shrink them out. The most difficult part was just making sure the tapes were nicely centered along the entire length you were working on. Once everything was positioned and pulled tight, we worked our way towards the roll of tape, first setting the center down, and then shrinking and setting down the edges. I'm guessing it's possible to overdo the pulling on these thin tapes, but I was pulling fairly hard to stretch them around the arced areas and didn't have any problems. Keeping the heat lower and going slower seemed to be the best when it came to working the wrinkles out of the edges. Being thin and not having a heat sink under the edges, I think it's pretty easy to get the tapes too hot. For all of the trailing edges, we used two inch finishing tapes, but for the leading edge seams on the control surfaces, we used three inch tapes. Without any curves, these were pretty straightforward to put on. All right, that pretty well covers covering the control surfaces. We actually didn't cover the flaps yet, I'm a little bit worried about running out of materials, so I'm going to wait and do the flaps at the end. That way I don't have to worry about running out of material partway through covering the fuselage. But um, they'll be exactly like the ailerons, except we won't have to do the counterbalance tubes, so they won't be any big deal at all. But we'll check back in after we've finished covering the fuselage. Now my only question is, what the heck to do with all this leftover shot? I don't know which I feel worse about. <laughs>
this joke or the fact that this shot will never get its chance to fly.